Our mateys, today we're going to speak like a pirate, or rather we're going to create an English to pirate translator. So this is the, the no-brainer, and I have currently downloaded this piratespeak.java and this pirate.txt, and with those two pieces of information, we're going to finish this program. I also have the code listed here. I, it's not necessarily going to be the same code that I do in the video. I can't always remember it at the same time. So just so you know, that if you get lost, you can type that in. But I'm going to go through it so I can explain what each line of code does as we go. So here's my pirate speak. The only thing new on this is I do have a J text area. A J text area is exactly a J text field only bigger there's what it looks like it's big you can do multiple lines in there so I've got two J text areas to write my English sentence and then when I hit translate it will show me what the pirate version of that sentence is this file is incomplete there's a couple of comments uh, that you need to add some code and I will take you through that as well so to start with, we are going to have a pirate dictionary class. And uh, well, let me show you the text file. The text file is just a plain notepad flyer or whatever you use to create text files. And in it, it's got an English word, and then it's got a pirate translation for the word. So every other line is English, and every other line is pirate. So that's how we're going to work our translation. It's just a simple lookup table. So let's code our pirate dictionary. Our pirate dictionary is going to handle all of the file reading. And so because of that, I've got this import java.io.star semicolon. I also have this util one because I'm going to use the scanner. And because when I read the information from the file, I'm going to store it into um, an array list. That way I don't have to keep accessing the file time and time again. So because I'm storing it into an array list, I need to declare an array list. So I'm going to say private uh, array list string. This is going to be all of the English words. So I'm going to name it English. And then I'm also going to have a list of pirate words. Now I actually prefer how we did this in class with the gumball guess where instead of having uh, how do you spell pirate where instead of having two lists like this we just have one list and it's storing both pieces of information by having a, another class that just has the English word and the pirate word but I didn't want to freak you guys out with three dot Java files so we're gonna just stick with parallel arrays parallel arrays are gonna have these two lists are correlated by their index position. So position zero of English will correlate with the translation of position uh, zero in pirate, if that makes sense. All right, so that's what parallel arrays are. Not that you'll ever be tested on them because that's not really a concept in this class, but there you go. Okay, we do need to have our constructor. Let's put a comment in. The constructor is going to load up the lists with the stuff from the file. That was the good technical terms there. So remember our, our constructor is always public and it has to be the same exact name as the class. Keep in mind all three of these files have to be stored in the same directory. Okay, I need a couple of variables. I need a variable for my file name, and that's just going to be my uh, pirate.txt file. Make sure you spell this exactly how you spell it here so you don't get any file not found exceptions. Um, I do need my scanner. So my scanner is scanner. file in. Okay, I'm not going to declare it there. I'm going to come declare it down here because I'm going to declare my scanner and open it at the same time to show you something. Okay, so I would do a new file reader with the given file name. Okay, this file name is right here so it's going to open up file pirate.txt with our file reader okay so this is dangerous code we know that it's dangerous code because 
I don't know, you watched the lecture, hopefully. Um, so if I run this, it's going to give me an error. There's an unreported file not found exception. Since this is dangerous code, you have to put it into a try catch. Now, not all dangerous code is forced into a try catch. You can still get errors without, uh, um, Excuse me. You should. That was kind of weird. You can still get errors without uh, having this try catch. But I'm going to press enter a couple times over here. That way we can have more code in our in our try, and then we're going to catch this exception. Now you can catch um, the specific exception of the file not found exception if you want to. Um, we might have more than one error in this, so I'm going to leave it generic just to keep this code pretty simple. But yeah, you could catch the specific file not found exception. It's always best to print out the error. That way you can see what's going on. Okay, let's compile that again and see if our error goes away. So now that it's in a try catch, it likes this line of code because this is dangerous code. We have to put in some some placeholders to make sure it's uh, the exceptions taken into account. Okay, next thing we want to do now that our file is open is we want to iterate through the file. So I'm going to use a for loop, and so long as the file is is still has more information in it, that's our file that has next then we want to keep reading the file. Okay, currently this is an eternal loop right now because we're reading, we're seeing if the file has any more information, but we're never reading the file, so it's going to continue this loop forever. Okay, after I read the entire file, I want to make sure I close my file, so I'm going to get that in right now. Otherwise, knowing me, I will forget. Okay, so now let's read in our file. To read in the, from the file, you say file in dot. Now you can choose what you're reading based upon what is in the file. If you have uh, just want to read the next word, you could say next. If you want to read in the next int, you could say next int. If you want to read in the next double, you could say next double. In our case, we want to read in, in the entire line, so I'm going to say the line. Okay, this has to be stored in something. I can't just say, because remember, next line returns a value, so we have to set it equal to something else. Or in our case, we just want to add it to our English list. So here I'm going to say English list or English dot add. Now in the parentheses I can put my next line. I gotta put my closing parentheses before the semicolon. And whatever gets returned from this next line gets now added to the English list. Okay, I also want to do the same with the pirate list. So I'm going to copy and paste that code and change English to pirate. There it is. And make sure you close the file at the end, and voila, our pirate translator is somewhat functional. It's All it's doing is loading the information from the file into the list. So now what we've got to do is we've got to go and translate each of those words. So we're going to do another little method in our, in our pirate dictionary to make sure that we can easily translate from English to pirate. Okay, so I'm going to come down after my try catch and we'll put a couple of comments in. This ends the catch. This bracket right here ends our constructor. This bracket right here ends the class. Oops, forgot the comment. So before the class ends, but after the constructor ends, I want to translate a pirate word into English. Okay, so if I'm going to translate a pirate word, uh, let's put this down, translate pirate into English. All right, remember back to our methods. What information do we need to know in order to translate from pirate to English? Well, we need to know what the English word is. So we know we are going to have a parameter. Uh, string English. Okay, A I N G L I S H. My list is called English, so I'm going to call this English word to distinguish. Okay, so that is the information I need in order to translate from English to pirate. Well, what is the answer to our method? What are we solving in this particular situation? We are solving the problem of we want to 
find out what the pirate word is. Since the pirate word is a string, um, and that's the solution to our problem, we are going to say public string as our return type. And then I'm going to make up some sort of method name called get pirate word here. There it is. So there is our get pirate word. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to return back the pirate word that's at the same position in the pirate list that the English word is in the English word list. Yeah, you can see why I like just one list in that other bubblegum program, but that's okay. We'll deal with this. Okay, now I since I'm dealing with positions, since I need to access positions, I can't use a for each loop. I have to use a regular for loop since I need the position. So here I'm going to iterate for and i equals zero, i is less than English dot size. Remember it's dot size for an array list and dot length for a, an array. i plus plus. Okay, so that's going to iterate through my entire um, English list. Now I want to see if the English word is the word I'm looking for. So I'm going to do an if statement that says if English, well, which word am I looking at in the list? I have to tell it. Well, I'm looking at all of them, so I'm going to use my variable i. So English.get of position i. Now I want to see if that's equal to the English word. Okay, but remember, we can't use double equals when we're comparing strings. So don't forget, this is, this is reviewing lots of things with this program. I'm, I'm liking this. So instead, I'm going to do a dot equals, and I'm going to do one more step and say equals ignore case. So that way, it doesn't matter if they enter in uppercase or lowercase, it'll still find it. Okay, so if I find the word, the English word, that means I is the position I'm looking for, and I can just return back position I in the pirate list. So that's all I'm going to do here. Return pirate dot get I. There it goes. Now, if it makes it all the way, here's my end if, through that if statement, and all the way through the entire loop, there's my end loop, that means this one right here is my and get pirate word before the method ends, but after the loop ends. If it makes it through the entire list and can't find that English word, then it's probably not in my dictionary because my dictionary is severely limited. You're welcome to add more text if you like. So instead, I'm just going to return back the English word. I-N-E-N-G L-I-S-H word. That way, words that aren't in the dictionary will still get translated, but they'll just stay in English. Okay, so get pirate word just takes one word and translates it to pirate. Now, I want to translate an entire sentence at a time. Okay, so this next mech, there's my end pirate word, there's my end class. I'm going to add one more method in to translate an entire sentence. Translate sentence. Okay, what is the question that we're asking is we want to be able to translate the pirate sentence. What information do we need? So, so excuse me, let me, let me go. So since the, the question that I'm asking is to be able to translate a pirate sentence, I'm going to name my method um, get pirate sentence. Sounds good. What information do I need to be able to translate a sentence into pirate? Well, I need the English sentence. Um, what is the answer to the problem I'm trying to solve? Well, the answer is going to be my pirate sentence. So my return type is string for the pirate sentence. Okay, that is my function prototype. Yay, we're re oh, now since this is in a class, it just have to say public on it. There we go. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through this sentence, find the word, and com and call this get pirate word and convert it into um, pirate. So uh, my um, I, my answer is going to be string pirate sentence. S e n t n t e n c. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to start that out as nothing. 
And then I, as I translate each word in this sentence, I'm going to add it to my pirate sentence. And then the answer to this is to, to get the pirate sentence, all I have to do is return the pirate sentence. S-E-N-T-E-N-C-E, -E -E, there we go. And then I've got this solved. Okay, so what we're going to do to parse this is we're going to find the scanner. The nice thing about the scanner is it also works with strings. And you can sen parse your sentence just using the the scanner so because it, it'll go if we just do a dot next it just gets each individual word right so here I'm gonna do another scanner I'm gonna call this I don't know sentence parser because it's just gonna parse my sentence equals new scanner and so instead of a file or instead of a system dot in I'm gonna just put my English sentence because that's what I want to chop up into words is this English sentence. Now this scanner works the same way. We can use that has next. So long as there's more words in the file, well sentence, e and c I can't spell sentence and talk at the same time. So long as there's more information in the file, we're gonna keep translating. Okay, we're going to use, instead of a next line though, I'm going to use a dot next so it only gets each word at a time. High space there, it's just going to get high, then it will get there. Alright, so I'm going to first get the word, string word equals sentence parser dot next. Not next line, not next int, not next double, it's got to be just the next word. Once I get that word, I can translate that to pirate. So I can say string, um, I'm going to call this P word, because that's pirate word, I guess, equals, and I can use my get pirate word to get whatever word that is. Get pirate word, and I'll send it the word. Now I'm just going to add that pirate word onto my pirate sentence. So pirate sentence equals p word plus and then we'll put some spaces in between there no yeah I do but instead of just equals I want to do a plus equals that way it keeps adding it on to the pirate sentence alternatively I can do it the long way and I could say pirate sentence equals pirate sentence plus p word both ways work all right once it's made it through all of that, it's going to return the pirate sentence. So this is now theoretically done, except for the 500 errors that I now have to fix. Great, which means you guys have 500 errors too, huh? All right, let's go see why. Uh, public string get pirate word says there's a semicolon expected. Oh, I see it, and you guys were probably yelling at me at this video. Do you see that parenthesis? And uh, anytime we have, my finger must have slipped. That has to be an opening squiggly bracket, not a parenthesis, because the, it, that's what starts and ends our method. Okay, let's see. I went from 22 errors down to how many? I still got a few. Let's clear that out and see. Oh, down to zero. Yay, that's always nice. Okay, catch us in the next video and we'll put this all together with the driver program.